Hand hygiene is the single most important action that any staff member can take to prevent infection. The evidence for this has been presented in two key documents by the World Health Organization and the Centres for Disease Control. This guidance has been accepted by NHS Scotland and by NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde based on the strength of the evidence. As well as being evidence-based, this is a simple common sense action that will help keep patients safe from harm. There are crucial elements of hand hygiene that must take place to ensure that this is effective. Cleaning your hands at any of the five moments and using the correct technique will ensure you are protecting yourself and your patients. Being bare below the elbows is a requirement for all NHS staff as the evidence shows that failure to do this results in an ineffective hand hygiene technique. Some medical staff seem to be unclear regarding the guidance and the strength of the evidence supporting this. The scientific evidence has been reviewed on behalf of the NHS staff by Health Protection Scotland. The protocol is based on this evidence and is mandatory for all staff. I would remind colleagues that infection control policies are part of your contractual conditions of employment. We take this issue very seriously and refusal to comply with the protocol will result in disciplinary action being taken. This is a major issue for patient safety and I'm grateful for your cooperation. Morning. Morning, Lee. What Good do we morning. have today? We have two new admissions today. Um, we're going to start with Mrs. James. Um, could I remind you of hand hygiene, please, doctors? Now we'll look at the common failures that arise when medical staff have the opportunity to clean their hands. Good morning, Mrs. James. How are you feeling this morning? Much better, thanks. Hand hygiene must take place before any patient contact. This prevents contamination from staff hands. Mrs. James, we're going to take some blood off you as we discussed. Is that all right? Yes, that's okay. If a procedure involves breaking the patient's skin and potential body fluid exposure, hand hygiene must occur immediately before the contact. Body fluid exposure also requires use of appropriate PPE, including disposable gloves and an apron. Thank you. I'll see you later. Hand hygiene must occur immediately after exposure to body fluids, even if gloves were worn. Body fluids are not always visible to the eye, and hands can be contaminated after exposure, despite the confidence of staff in their own practice. And one more deep breath for me. And out. That's excellent. Just going to quickly feel your pulse. That's great. I'll just jot that in your notes. Hand hygiene must occur immediately after touching a patient. This will prevent contamination from the patient to the surroundings or to other patients. Good news, Mrs. James. I've got all your test results and they're normal. So I think we can start planning to discharge you home tomorrow, possibly. That's brilliant. Thank you. I'll see you later. Hi Mrs Smith, how are you feeling today? Hand hygiene must occur after touching patient surroundings as contamination can be picked up and carried to other patients and their surroundings. Hand hygiene at each of the five moments will lower the risk of healthcare associated infections for staff as well as patients. We can all make excuses for poor hand hygiene. It's not my fault that infections occur. And what exactly is the evidence for this? This is just too simple to be effective. Medical staff are taught to question guidance. I'm just too busy to do it every time.
As long ago as 1847, Dr Semmelweis recognised that doctors' hands are a source of contamination that can cause patient harm, and doctors were instrumental in researching and implementing hand hygiene guidance. The guidance has been updated since then as a result of current evidence, but the key message remains the same. Clean hands save lives.